بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم the next talk in this session will be about the imaging of cortical formation disorders or the disorders of neuronal migration and um, this is actually a topic which has been emerged after the uh, introduction of MRI in the clinical practice and um, uh, many of these lesions have been missed before the era of MRI and now are accurately diagnosed by the help of this new imaging technique. Then uh, what, what do we mean by cortical formation? Uh, actually, by the seventh week in the gestational age, there, there, uh, there are mitotic activity <coughs> of the subependymal layer on, in the wall of the ventricle. Uh, let us say that this is the wall of the ventricle and there is mitotic activity of the cells in the wall of the ventricle. And these cells will start to, to migrate <coughs> upon what is known as the radial fibers to form the cerebral cortex. And this migration uh, uh, can be uh, stopped at any phase, either here or during the migration or in the final stage. And any lesion that can disturb this migration will result in this group of diseases, which are known as the uh, neuronal migration disorders. Actually, the causes are not exactly known, but they are uh, suspected to be one or more of these issues, either intrauterine infection, metabolic disorder, ischemia, genetic or chromosomal abnormalities. <coughs> Most of these patients with, will present clinically by similar complaints. With the most important of these complaints at all is scissors or epilepsy. Then uh, variable degrees of developmental delays and mental retardation may accompany the main complaint, which is the scissors. These are the disorders of cortical formation. Number one, disorder in proliferation here in this stage. Number two, disorders in migration during the movement of the cells along the radial fibers to reach the cortex. Number three, the, the, the cells have reached already the final destination, but there, is, there are disorders in organization of these cells to form the cerebral cortex. Then we have disorders of proliferation, disorders in migration, and the disorders in organization. We'll start first by disorders of proliferation. And these are in the form of two main issues. Number one, the proliferation has a mal malformed proliferation or abnormal proliferation resulting in a new blast. The abnormal mal or the malformation of the proliferation will result of a well-known uh, lesion which is known as hemimigalencephaly and a relatively rare lesion which is known as the cortical dysplasia. Abnormal uncontrolled proliferation will result in congenital brain tumors which are represented in two, these two issues which are the ganglioglioma and this embryoplastic new, uh, neuroectodermal tumor or what we call the DENET. Then we start first by the hemimegalencephaly. From its name, hemimegalencephaly means that a part or, or half of the brain is abnormally enlarged due to abnormal proliferation of the, of the cells in this hemisphere. And if you look to this uh, uh, cadaveric sections, and here you can see that, that the right cerebral hemisphere is abnormally enlarged also, the ventricle is abnormally enlarged and a, a characteristic configuration of the frontal horn which is pointing anteriorly. This is one of the main diagnostic issues of this abnormality. And uh, if you look to the normal frontal horns, it usually, the normal frontal horn, it usually points laterally. But the, the frontal horn of the hemimigalencephalic hemisphere will point anteriorly. Then you will got disturbance of the gray-white matter interface. There is masking of the gray-white matter interface in the affected hemisphere. And also you may get abnormal enlargement of the gyri, which is known bachygyra, 
and uh, maybe a, a few gyri in this uh, affected hemisphere. Then this is an MRI of a, a right-sided hemimigalencephaly, and you should remember that hemimigalencephaly may affect a lobe of the brain, not the whole hemisphere. It may affect only the frontal lobe, for example, or the frontal and parietal, for example. And this is the characteristic landmark for the diagnosis of hemigalencephaly, which is the pointing of the ventricle, the frontal horn of the ventricle anteriorly. And you got abnormalities in the white matter, like areas of abnormal signal, loss of the gray white matter interface. And this hemisphere, which is normal, you can see the white matter and the gray matter, and you can easily discriminate the interface in between. Then this is the hemigalencephaly megalencephalic hemisphere on the right side and you can see disturbance of the gray white matter interface few cortical sulci broad enlarged gyri and here are the most of the imaging finding number one enlargement of the hemisphere enlargement of the lateral ventricle this plus the cortex which is sick or maybe may show calcification heterotopia we'll discuss in a few moments then loss of the gray white matter interface this is a hemimigalencephalic hemisphere on the right side and you can see that the cerebral hemisphere is markedly enlarged few cortical sulci are seen on the surface and the frontal horn is of the lateral ventricle is pointing anterior another case of hemimigalencephaly and you can see the left hemisphere is enlarged the left lateral ventricle is dilated the frontal horn of the of the hemis of the lateral ventricle is facing anteriorly abnormal densities in the white matter another example of hemimigalencephaly on the right side you see the right cerebral hemisphere is enlarged and the ventricle <coughs> is pointing anteriorly and you see some thickening of the uh, gyri and a few cells are uh, using the 3D uh, reconstructive facility, you may uh, you can see the hemigalencephalic hemisphere with thick, broad gyri, few sulci, and enlargement of the affected hemisphere. Also, note the characteristic configuration of the frontal horn of the lateral ventricle. Then uh, hemimigalencephaly may be focal, affecting only part of the hemisphere, like the frontal lobe, for example. In this, uh, in this uh, situation, you will also see the findings localized to the frontal, uh, to the frontal lobe, and the, you also can see the characteristic configuration of the frontal horn of the ventricle. Then uh, the cortical dysplasia means that there is a, an abnormal signal in the cortex of the brain in a focal area. Yeah, this is one of the uh, abnormalities in the cortical formation due to the abnormal proliferation. Then if you look carefully to this MRI and you can see in this uh, uh, flare image, abnormal signal in the frontal cortex parasagittal in location and the same can be uh, seen here. There is uh, abnormal signal. There is no mass effect by the uh, uh, affected cortex. And uh, then you came to the uh, abnormal proliferation resulting in tumors. There are two types of tumors. The first one is known as DENET or this imperioplastic epithelial tumor. Uh, uh, <coughs> this is, uh, as you can see here, is a situation between cortical dysplasia and the, the true, true neoplasms. They are actually not true neoplasms, and uh, uh, both tumors, the denet and the, the ganglio uh, neuroma, are located in the temporal region most, in most of the cases. Uh, in this particular tumor, there is no calcium, there is no edema, and there is no enhancement. And there are two main diagnostic criteria of this lesion. Number one is the lobulated outline. Number two is the remodeling of the overlying calvary. If you look carefully here, and you can see that the calvarium is slightly embedded. Because this tumor may, may not produce any symptoms, it can be discovered at an older age, and it, it appears of low signal in the T1 and high signal in the T2. Of course, you can discriminate easily between this lesion and the cerebral infarction. 
then this is the ganglioglioma where calcium is present in most of the tumors and you can see that this tumor cannot be easily discriminated from the most famous oligodendroglioma especially whenever the age is uh, uh, the adolescent or above then you can you can see a calcified lesion inside the cerebral parenchyma and in my opinion you should diagnose this as ganglio as a oligodendroglioma until proved otherwise then uh, you can reach this diagnosis if you see this criteria a huge tumor in the pediatric age group especially in the first year of life or in, in the children below the age of 10 years with a, may, a large cystic component and an extensive form of edema around the tumor you can you can suspect the diagnosis of anaplastic ganglioglioma which is uh, considered the, the malignant form of the more benign lesion ganglioglioma then you came to the disorders of migration. We finished with the disorders of proliferation and we are now in the disorders of migration. The neurons migrate on the radial fibers to reach the cortex. If disorders occur here, then the neurons will stop in this uh, area. Abnormal location of the neurons is known as heterotopia. And heterotopia means that there is abnormal gray matter, uh, sorry, normal gray matter in abnormal location. And the same, the same lesion, the suspected lesion, trauma infection, ischemia, metabolic, genetic, uh, chromosomal abnormalities can result in damage of the radial fibers, the radial glial fibers where the neurons migrate. Then you got migrational disorders, which are represented by the heterotopia. Then the heterotopia has two main types, the focal type and the diffuse type. In the diffuse type, you get this appearance. Here is the ventricle. Here are the neurons which are migrating towards the cortex and they stop in between before reaching the cortex. Then you got what is known as the double cortex. A cortex an a, a, a original cortex, then gray matter, uh, white matter, then another cortex, then white matter between the ventricles. Whenever you see a band like this of gray matter below the original cortex, you call it diffuse heterotopia or band heterotopia or double cortex heterotopia. Then look at this in the uh, uh, MRI images. This is the ventricle, this is the white matter after the ventricle and this is the cortex and you can see a thin film of white matter and another cortex then you got what is known as double cortex or band heterotopy in the coronal images you can see also the, the same uh, here is the ventricle gray, white matter cortex and the gray, uh, white matter and another cortex Sometimes you get too many layers of uh, uh, gray matter like this and you get three layers of band heterotopy. Then the lysencephaly, which means a gyra. There is no, uh, no sulci on the surface of the brain or what we call the smooth brain. The smooth brain only show the, the, uh, the sylvian fissure, which is very short and vertically oriented giving the brain the figure of eight configuration or the hourglass configuration and you see considering these small fissures the hourglass configuration of lysencephaly this is a lysencephalic brain where a few sulci and the gyri are seen the sylvian fissures are vertically oriented and they are very short and the surface of the brain is very smooth diagnostic of lysencephaly Another case of lysencephalic brain where you, you got no subsi on the surface of the brain, very short, vertically oriented sylvian, uh, sylvian fissures. Then these are the MRI finding, agyric brain with areas of bacchigyria. Sometimes you can see a sulcus or two. Our glass configuration of the brain due to shortening and the vertical orientation of the sylvian fissures. Primitive vertical sylvian fissures and the small temporal lobes. Also, you may got corpus callosum agenesis, a small brain stem, and the gray, gray matter heterotop. Here is the lysencephalic brain, and in the sagittal image, you can see that the brain stem is slightly 
uh, hypoplast. They came to a step before the agyra, which is the, the bacchigyra. The bacchigyra means that there are some gyri, but the gyri are broad and very thick. Look to the normal brain with the normal appearance of the gyri and the normal thickness of the gyri. But here in the bacchigyra, you can see that the gyrus is very thick. See, this is the thickness of the cortex and is very broad because of the limited number of the uh, cortical salsa. This is the case of Dandy Walker malformation, and you can see retrocerebellar cyst communicating with the forced ventricle. The cerebellum is hypoblastic, the vermis is aplastic. And higher up, you got some hydrocephalic changes with bacchigyra of the brain. And you can see a sulcus and a sulcus. This, this, the, the whole length of the gyrus, which is markedly thickened and broad. Then these are two daughters uh, 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 showing the same uh, abnormality, uh, which is the bacchigyra, as seen in the sagittal images and in the axial images as well. You, you can notice that the gyrus is broad and is very thick. The cortex is very thick. You know that the cortex is few millimeter thick, but here it may reach up to one or two centimeter thickness. In bacchigyra also here, you can, you can easily notice the few number of the sulci and the broadening of the gyri with market thickening of the gyri. This can be also uh, uh, discriminated or seen better by the surface reconstructed 3D MRI images where you can see the market thickening of the gyri and the, the fusel site in the region of bacchigyra. Then you came to the, we said that heterotopia, which means abnormal location of the gray matter, can, can be presented into two forms. <laughs> The first one is the diffuse form, which is known as band heterotopia, where you can see a band between the vent, a band of cortical tissue between the ventricle and the original cortex. The focal heterotopia may be, may be seen in two forms, focal as a mass and focal as subendymal nodules. This is known as subendymal heterotopia, which is more common, and this is what we call the focal heterotopia, which is less common where you can see within the white matter a mass of normal cortex. If you suspect the possibility of tumor and you inject the contrast material, this lesion will not enhance because it is a normal cortex. And it will show the same signal behavior in all pulse sequences similar to the cortex in the, in the T1, in the T2, in the uh, flare, and all other uh, imaging. Then if you look to this, to this case, and you can see multiple small nodules related to the wall of the ventricle showing exactly the similar signal as to the cortex. And this is what we call the subependymal heterotopy. If you inject the contrast material, these lesions will, will not enhance because they represent the normal cortex in abnormal location. And this situation should be discriminated from the tuberous sclerosis. In, uh, in cases of tuberous sclerosis, before the tubers got calcified, they will enhance with contrast material. But the heterotopia will not enhance with uh, contrast material. Also, the tubers of, uh, of tuberous sclerosis frequently calcify. And uh, in the T2-weighted image, they, saw, they, sh they show very dark signal compared to the signal of the cortex while the heterotopia will show the same signal configuration exactly similar to the cortex. And these lesions can be hardly diagnosed by CT. You see this, this focal area related to the wall of the ventricle in the occipital region, and it is also seen here by uh, MRI T1 weighted image and is clearly identified in the coronal, in the coronal image. <coughs> And this is the focal heterotopia, a focal mass of normal cortex within the white matter. And uh, if you, if you uh, do a, a T1, it will simulate the cortex. T2, it will simulate the cortex. There is no edema around this suspected lesion. There is no mass effect and there is no enhancement if you inject the contrast material. Then you came to the last station, which is 
the station of organization. And here, after proliferation, then migration, then organization, the, the neurons already reach the final destination, and there are two main pathologies. The first one is polymicrogyra, and the second one is known as chizencephaly or schizencephaly. The polymicrogyra is the opposite of bachygyra. Polymicrogyra means you have too many, too many small gyri with so many uh, cortical sulci. And this lesion can be hardly seen on imaging, and I have one case. If you see this patient with chancencephaly, we'll discuss in a moment. And if you magnify this image, you can, you can easily identify too many small gyri in the uh, cortex of the uh, chancencephalic defect. Then this is polymicrogyra and chancencephaly are, are also the two main issues in, in the proliferation, in the organization. Chancencephaly means a defect in the surface of the brain. And this defect may communicate with the ventricle, then you, you call it open lip schizencephaly, and may not communicate with the ventricle, and you call it closed lip schizencephaly. What's very important for diagnosis of schizencephaly is the cleft should be lined by cortical tissue. And you see here the cleft, this minute cleft, is lined by cortical tissue on both sides. Also here, this cleft, which is communicating with the ventricle, should be lined by cortex on both surfaces. Look at this, at this schizencephaly. You got a cleft on the surface of the brain, and this cleft is communicating with the ventricle. Look at the borders of the cleft, and you can see the cortical tissue, the same signal as the cortex lining the cleft from both sides. This is very important to diagnose schizencephaly. This is the closed lip schizencephaly, and you see cortex lining both sides of the cleft. Whenever the cleft does not communicate with the ventricle, you can see the ventricle, you can see a small diverticulum in the wall of the ventricle, corresponding to the side where the cleft will communicate with the ventricle. This is one of the helpful signs to diagnose schizencephaly, the closed lip type. This is an open lip schizencephaly, and you see the, the cleft which is communicating with the ventricle and the, the arrows point to the cortex lining the uh, walls of the cleft itself. This is completely different from borencephaly. And borencephaly is a, a, a damaged cerebral tissue communicating with the ventricle with no cortical lining. And it does not usually reach the surface of the brain. Then if you look here, you can, you can see there is a diverticulum in the wall of the ventricle corresponding to this area. Actually, the role of CT in diagnosis of neuronal migration is limited, but the MRI is much more superior. Uh, Chizencephaly may be bilateral and uh, maybe closed lip on one side and open lip on one side, maybe smaller on one side and larger on one side. As you can see here, there is bilateral open lip schizencephaly, and you see cortical brain tissue lining the, the cleft on the left side, also cortical brain tissue lining the cleft on the uh, right side, and also you can use the 3D surface reconstruction to see the cleft in this area. Then, you can uh, see in this male, seven years old, a diverticulum in the wall of the ventricle and a cleft. And the, the rest of the images show that the cleft does not communicate actually with the ventricle. And this is rising carefully the closed lip type. Then the final uh, classification of the lesions, you, you got three abnormalities. Abnormalities in the proliferation, abnormalities in the migration, and abnormalities in organization. The proliferation abnormalities will include the hemimegalencephaly, the cortical dysplasia, the tumors, including the ganglioglioma and the dennet tumor, some cases of tuberous sclerosis as well. Disorders of migration will include subebendimal heterotopia, focal heterotopia, band heterotopia, and the lysencephaly. The orders of organization include polymicrogyra and the schizencephaly. <coughs> this is my own classification, just to remember these disorders in a simple way. Think about heterotopias, and you got in the heterotopias abnormal gray matter, the subebendimal type, the focal type, and the band type. Then think of gyral abnormalities. 
including a gyra, no gyri, smooth brain, nice and carefully. Bacchi gyra, or very thick, short, very thick, broad gyri. Bony micro gyra, two numerous gyri with uh, too many such signs. Then other three abnormalities which are not included in these topics, including hemimegalencephaly, schizencephaly, and the cortical uh, displays. Then the questions. Yes, sabebendaimel etiru tobi. Okay. Lysin Kevin. Becky Gaia. Very good. Hemi Miguel in Kefali on the right side. Yes, closed lab, Chizen Kefali on the left side. Do you know the diverticulum of the ventricle? Okay. Lysin Kefali. Hemi Miguel in Kefali, left cerebral hemisphere. Bilateral open lip, Shizen Kefali, very good. Bilateral open lip. Thank you very much. Okay.